that nobody in this place, in this room, is here by accident. You didn't just up and say, well, I believe I'll go up there to church today, or I'll go to church this morning. The Lord brought you here and, and directed you a pass here, path here for a reason. And I believe that some, the Lord wants to do something for somebody here today. And as I prayed this week and tried to study, I had uh, some other thoughts and things that I, I would have personally rather preached on, but somehow or another the Lord kept bringing my heart and my mind back to this Scripture. And He said, and it seemed like to my heart, you tell them what this Scripture says and leave the results up to me. And so this morning I'd like to preach you a simple message on a very well-known truth, ought to be well-known to us that are saved, but maybe there's somebody here that desperately needs what I'm going to say this morning. And if, if it's you, and if God's brought you here for this reason, I hope and pray that you'll let this be the day when you'll settle it, your account with Him, and that you'll walk out of this place a new man or a new woman, new boy or girl, ready to live your life for Him. Let's look at G, uh, what Jesus said in John chapter 6 and verse 36. John chapter 6 and verse 30, or let me start with verse 35. John chapter 6 and verse 35. And Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger. He that believeth on me shall never thirst. But I said unto you, that ye also have seen me, and believe not. All that the Father giveth me shall come to me, and him that cometh to me I will in no wise cast out. Now, I want to speak to you on verse 37 this morning, where Jesus said, All that the Father giveth me shall come to me, and him that cometh to me I will in no wise cast out. I want to bring that message to your heart today. Jesus said, Everybody that comes to me, I will in no wise cast them out. And by that, on that thought this morning, I'd like to use this as my subject. Jesus refuses none. Jesus refuses none. You know, if you go to join some organization, or you go to this club, and join this club, or that club, or this outfit, or that, a lot of times they'll say, No, you're not in the right social standing, you don't have enough money, or this is wrong, that's wrong, you can't be a part of what's going on, but thank God the Lord Jesus Christ never has said no to anybody. And so I want to speak to you on that thought this morning. Would you bow your heads for a word of prayer? Our Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this day. Thank you for health and strength and the blessings of life. Thank you, our Father, most of all, most of all, for Jesus that hung on the cross one day, purchased our salvation, that we might be saved. I thank you, Lord, that you've opened our eyes. Lord, that you've given us the light. Lord, that we can walk in the light and be the children of the light. I pray in Jesus' name this morning, Lord, as we will look into your precious word, that these few thoughts that you've laid upon our heart will bring rejoicing and gladness and joy to the heart of the Christian. And then, Lord, for that one who is not saved here today, I pray this message may burn into their heart and convict them by your power of your Spirit, Lord, that they may come to Jesus before it's everlastingly and eternally too late. Help us to realize, Lord, our time is running short. Help us to realize we don't know how many days we have left. And so, Lord, that they might, might be saved in this service today. Give us clearness of mind, clearness of thought, illuminate our mind, loose our tongue, that we may be able to declare your word this morning the way it should be and deserve to be preached. Whatever you do for us, we'll praise you and thank you for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now, I want you to uh, keep your mind and your thought on that verse this morning where the Bible says Jesus said, I will in no wise cast out anybody that comes to me. Now, there is a lie going around in the world today. The devil, the father of all liars and lies, has come up with this lie, and he's hatched it out of hell, and it's going all over the United States today, and this is the lie that the devil is telling many people. And the reason we know that this is true is because we, we go out and talk to people and witness to them and hear what they say. It's not a very uncommon thing at all these days 
to find people who when you talk to them about accepting Jesus as their Savior and coming to the Lord, they'll tell you, they'll, they'll say, well, I've done this or I've done that and I've been so evil and I've been so wicked and I've been, I've been involved in this sin or I've been involved in that sin. I just believe that the Lord's fed up with me and that He won't have me if I come to Him. And it, and it happens many times today. So many people, the devil has lied to them and told them that because they've been so sinful that the Lord just will not forgive them or have anything to do with them. Now, there's two reasons uh, this is happening today. First of all, it's because people listen to the devil now, I guess, more than they ever have before. I mean, everything the devil says, that's what people go for today. I've tried to tell you and teach you before that the devil always teaches and tells people opposite from what God tells them to do. If God says, uh, love him and love his house, the devil will tell you not to love the Lord or love his house. If the Lord says, love your husband, love your wife, the devil will tell you, don't love your husband, don't love your wife. The devil always tells you to do opposite of what God has told you to do. And the big lie that the devil is telling people today is, well, since you've already gone this far, and since you've sinned this much, and since you've done that, and you've got drunk so many times, or you've told so many lies, or you've done so many things wrong, that God is tired and sick of you, and He'll not forgive you for what you've done. And I wouldn't doubt that if there is not people sitting all over McDowell County this morning, sitting at home, and they know they should be at church, they know they should be doing right, but the devil has convinced them that God's so mad at them that he will not forgive them for the way they've lived. And there's probably somebody sitting here in this church this morning that your life has been such a mess and you've sinned so much and done so much wrong, the devil's got you convinced, well, God will not hear you. God don't want to listen to you. He'll not, he'll not tell you. Uh, he'll not forgive you for anything that you've done. Many people are, are involved in deep sin also. I guess people are involved in deep, deep sin more now than ever before. I mean, it is not uncommon. It's not uncommon, folks, to meet a 20-year-old boy or girl these days that's already been on the chain gang, already been married and divorced and remarried, already been an alcoholic, already been a drug addict, all at 20 years old. Kids are really growing up fast these days and getting involved with deep sin at an early, very early age. I tell you, I've talked to people that's 22 and 23 years old that maybe some of them done been married twice and divorced and all kind of things happened to them. And I thought, how in the world do you do all this stuff in just 22? years. And they tell me about being in prison and, and killing somebody and everything else. Do you realize people are in deep, deep sin this morning? I mean, people are tangled up. There's some people right around man. Their life is in a flat mess. They're so tangled up in sin and they're so messed up with evil and, and rottenness and wickedness. Their life's in such a mess that they think there's no hope for them that God will not have anything to do with them. I tell you, we went to the prison. We visited the prison and talked to people and, and we tried to ask them when they get saved and, and they'd look at me and they, they would say like, are you kidding me? I was the meanest guy in school. I hated my teachers. I, I got in trouble with the law. I've robbed banks. I've told lies. I've done things. God don't want nothing like me. But I want to say to you this morning, this scripture burned in my soul this week. This scripture got a hold of me this week like it never has since I've been saved. The Lord Jesus Christ didn't say, except for a few, except for this, except for that. He just stood up there one day and he said, Him that cometh to me, I will in no wise cast out. And Brother Jesus made that statement to you, no matter what you've done, no matter where you've been, no matter how mean you've been, no matter how many, how many times you've sinned, Jesus said, if you'll come to me, I will not cast you out. I thank the Lord for that this morning. I'm glad to have a Savior like that. 
I tell you, if we were serving Buddha or Muhammad or something like that, he'd probably put a limit on people. And he'd say, if you go past this limit, I'll never help you. But not our Savior, not the Lord Jesus Christ, not the one we're serving, not the one we're singing about, not the one we're preach- preaching and praying to. I want you to know this morning, he said, if a man will come to me, I'll in no wise cast out. Now you say, well, how do we know that's true? Well, because the Bible says that Jesus, God cannot lie. Did you know that? That God cannot lie. I said this morning, God cannot lie. You say, Brother Danny, how do you know he ain't changed his mind? That's been nearly 2,000 years ago since Jesus said. Because the Bible said in the book of Hebrews, Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. If he said it 2,000 years ago, he still feels the same way this morning. I tell you, we're living in a day when people are demon-possessed. There's people messing around with demons. We're living in a day when people are controlled by alcohol, when people are controlled by drugs, when people are controlled by illicit sex and, and adultery and fornication. I mean, just their minds are warped and their life just tied up in it. But I want to say this morning, if Jesus would have said, if he would have meant to change his mind, he would have told us what he said 2,000 years ago goes for 1981. He, there's still room at the cross for you. He cannot lie. The Bible said in Titus chapter 1 and verse 2, God which cannot lie. The Bible said in Romans 3 and verse 4, let God be true and every man a liar. I want you to know this morning he cannot lie. And I I was thinking about that this week and I thought, glory, hallelujah. You think about this. Over all the hundreds and even thousands of years that there has been Christians. There's been Christians on this earth for nearly 2,000 years now. And during that time, hundreds of thousands, I guess even millions of people, have come to the Lord Jesus Christ. And I think about those times in the times of the martyrs, where a lot of those people who martyred Christians and, and people getting saved, a lot of those soldiers got saved, a lot of old pirates got saved, a lot of old people in the dark ages got saved, a lot of old people in the depression and nineteen and the twenties got saved, and then here we are all the way up to 1981, and I think you think about how many people has ever bowed their knee in an old-fashioned altar. You think of the thousands and thousands of people that somewhere got down on their knees and said, Jesus, Jesus, I need your help. You think of the literally millions of people on foreign soil that have bowed down in China and in Russia and Japan and Africa and said, Jesus, I worship devils, but now I've come to you. And you think about all of those thousands of people, and I'm glad to report to you this morning that over all of those thousands of people, every one of those that come with a sincere heart, not one of them, not one of them ever heard Jesus say, no, you've been been too sinful. Not one of them ever heard Jesus say, I don't have time for you now. Not one of them ever heard Jesus say, come back later. Not one of them ever heard Jesus say, I'm too busy. Not one of them ever heard Jesus say, I'm out to lunch. Not one of them ever heard Jesus say, I will not forgive. No, no. He sits at the right hand of the Father 24 hours a day, seven days a week while you and I are asleep. He never goes out of his office. He he never goes on vacation. He's constantly sitting there saying, Him that cometh to me, I will in no wise cast out. And I tell you, there's, there's never been a one out of all those millions of people that Jesus ever said no to. Not a one. Perfect record. The old song that's in the old song book says, Christ receiveth sinful men. I'm glad that he does. Do poor learners come to be taught? He'll not cast them out. Do sinful souls come for help? He'll not cast them out. Do poor patients come to be cured? He never cast one of them out. I mean, he wasn't like maybe a doctor in this world where a man come to him while Jesus was here on earth and he had a withered hand or he was blind or he's deaf and dumb or he couldn't hear or, or, you know, something was wrong with him and he come to Jesus with a sincere heart. The Lord never said, you've not got enough money, you've not... You've not got enough money to pay for the the cost of this healing, so I'll not hear you. He never turned one of them down. He never turned one of them away. He never said no to a single soul. The poor clients come to be advised. He will in no wise 
cast out. I thought about what Jesus said there, and I said the Bible says he will in no wise say no. Now, you know what in no wise means? That means under any circumstances, no matter what the situation is. He said, I will not under any circumstances refuse a person that comes to me in sincerity. And so my message to this congregation this morning is to say to you, no matter who you are, no matter where you've been, no matter what you've done, if you'll come to the Lord this morning with a sincere heart and really mean it from the bottom of your heart, He will not turn you down. He will not turn you away. He never has turned away one soul. Now, in the Scriptures, we can see Him receiving people. Let's look to the Word of God this morning and see how Christ receives everyone that comes to Him. I imagine there's probably somebody in here and you just a, a chronic thief. And You've had this habit of ever since you've been growing up of stealing things. And you just, every time you're around something that don't belong to you, whether you need it or not, you just want to steal it. And I guess everybody in here stole something at one time or another. How many of you in here have ever stole anything? Raise your hand. Come on now. Raise it up uh, high, high. Oh, I don't you to look what a bunch of thieves. There's, there's 200 and 14 thieves in this one room right here. I want you to know this morning, brother, everybody in here has been a thief. You say, I'm not no thief. Well, how many times do you have to steal before you're a thief? Two times, three times, ten times? No, just one time. One time stealing makes you a thief, right? All right, everybody in here is a thief. But you may be a person that just steals and steals and steals, and you don't seem like you can quit stealing. And you say, Brother Danny, I stole things. I stole a lot of money. I stole a car and I wrecked it. And I can't pay it back. What am I going to do? What if God won't forgive me for the way I've done? I tell you, brother, we see in the Word of God in Luke chapter 23 and verse 42, when Jesus was dying on the cross, there was a man over here on the other cross, and the Bible said that he was a thief. And that man was dying on the other cross, and he looked over at Jesus, and he said, Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. And Jesus looked back at him. He didn't say, no, you're a thief. You stole. You can't go back and pay back those things that you've done because you're dying on the cross. I'll not forgive you. No, the Lord told him in Luke chapter 23 and verse 43, Today thou shalt be with me in paradise. I tell you, Jesus said, Him that cometh to me, I will in no wise cast out. And then we say there may be somebody in here this morning that may be a liar. You may just be a helpless liar. You just can't quit lying. Now, lying is a sin just like stealing is. Most, most folks, when they think of the big sins, they think of lying, stealing, drinking, adultery, and, uh, you know, um, gambling or something like that. Want to name these sins? No matter what sin you're guilty of, Jesus will receive you. I tell you, he'll receive a liar. I tell you, the Bible said that he would. How many of you folks in here has ever told a lie? Raise your hand. Everybody's in here. If you don't raise your hand, that'll be your first one. Right, a second one, I should say. Right there. All right, you can put them down. Everybody in here is a liar. Everybody in here is a thief. Everybody in here is a liar. You say, my goodness, Brother Danny, I thought you were supposed to go to church and the preacher was supposed to talk positive and tell you how good and how wonderful everybody is. Okay, here's my positive message message to you this morning. You're all a bunch of thieves. You're all a bunch of liars. You're all a bunch of no-count, good-for-nothing sinners. And if the Lord don't help you, you'll go to hell. That's the most positive message I've got. And that goes for me. That goes for every last soul in this room. I want to say to you this morning, Jesus will receive a liar. You know, there ain't nothing worse than an old dirty liar. Man, I cannot stand to be around an old liar. I got saved and I got around good Christian people. And first thing you know, I got to where I just believed anything that anybody said. Anything anybody told me, I believe it. Boy, if you think like that, you are in for a big, big letdown. 
And when I found out that people who were supposed to be Christians just told flat out lies, and a lot of people just, Lord, I cannot stand to be around a person that you don't know whether to believe what they're saying or not. I, and I, can you imagine what the Lord thinks about a liar? Because one of his commandments said, Thou shalt not bear false witness. And the Lord can't stand lying. Nothing any worse, I don't guess, than an old liar. I want you to know, brother, we see in the Bible where there was a man by the name of Peter. Brother Peter was one of Jesus' disciples, and he was, he was a saved man too. When the pressure got on, times got hard, and they took the Lord off to crucify him, Peter was over there with the enemy, warming himself by the enemy's fire. And a little maiden come up to Peter that day, and she said, You're a follower of Jesus Christ. You belong to them. And he, he swore, and he cursed, and he lied. And he said, I don't even know that man. Told a flat-out lie. You believe it's possible for a Christian to lie? Boy, he sure did. You believe it's possible for a Christian to get the pressure put on them to the breaking point and they'll do some things that ain't right? He sure did. Man, this guy, he, 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 he lied. He just flat out lied. Now, you know, you know that's, that's a wicked sin for you to know Jesus and everything. A bunch of people get out here and put the pressure on you and say, you say, I never even heard of Jesus. Man, that's a bad lie, you know it? That's a pretty bad lie. Right? You can't hardly lie no worse than that. And I doubt if there's anybody in this room ever told a lie that bad. You might can you might can lie and cheat on your income tax, which is wrong, you know, but it ain't that ain't near as bad a lie as what this guy told. He said he didn't even know who Jesus was, and him one of his disciples. That's a real bad lie. Brother, you know what happened? He went out and he met Jesus coming out the door and he looked at him right in the face. He got to feeling so bad about that, the Bible said Peter went out and he wept bitterly. He just went out and cried his eyes out, boy. He said, I feel like a dog for this. And he, he, he got sincere. And then the Lord met him after his resurrection, and he said, Peter, feed my sheep. The Lord forgot all about his sin. He forgave him, and he used him on the day of Pentecost to preach a message that a, a, a couple of thousand people got saved. And I want you to know this morning, the Lord will receive those who have that kind of sin in their life. You may be just an old slick crook. You may just be a liar every way you've turned. You've lied all of your life. But I want to, I want to say this morning, if you'll come to the Lord and really mean it with a sincere heart, the Lord said, I will in no wise cast out. And let me say, since Peter was a Christian this morning, I'll say this before I move on. If you're a Christian and you've been saved, one of the greatest ways that devil, the devil defeats Christians is this. After you get saved, and then you go back and you mess up, maybe you backslide and you mess up a little bit, when you try to get right with the Lord, the devil will tell you, he'll come to you, and he'll say, No, sir, buddy. No, the Lord ain't going to forgive you. He forgive you when you first got saved, but no more. He'll not forgive you this time. You'll just have to sit around and be a nobody, be a nothing the rest of your life. The Lord won't forgive you. I'm saying here this morning, here was a good example of a Christian turning away from the Lord and denying the Lord and coming and got right with the Lord, and the Lord forgot all about it. He received him, he blessed him, and Peter turned out to be one of the greatest preachers that the world's ever seen. Let me say to you this morning, if you've been saved, if you've been saved, and you've got away from God, and you've backslid, if you come back to him and mean it with your heart, he will not cast you out. He will receive you. I know a lot of times you think he won't, but he will. And then the Lord will receive those who are helpless. A lot of times if a man, he lives his life running around drinking, gambling, doing all kinds of sins, and then he winds up getting in the hospital, getting paralyzed, and he's laying there and can't do nothing the rest of his life. And he thinks, well, my goodness, I, when I had my good legs and my good arms and everything, I was out trying to live for the devil, and I didn't want God being, and now here I am laid up in the hospital and laid up in a wheelchair and I'll never be able to walk again. Now the Lord won't forgive me. I just know the Lord won't forgive me because I'm helpless and I can't do anything for Him. 
I want you to know I read about a man in the Word of God in John chapter 5 where the Bible said there was a pool and the name of it was Bethesda and, a, and an angel come down every once in a while and ripple the water up a little bit and there was a great multitude of impotent folk laying around that pool and the Bible said that the first one that stepped in that pool after the trouble of the water would get well and there was a certain man that laid there 38 years had an infirmity and the Lord came by one day. He was a man that was helpless. He was a man laying on his bed. He couldn't walk. He wasn't able to give a lot of money to the church. He wasn't able to go out and walk around, knock on doors, be a soul winner. I mean, he was helpless. And the Lord looked at him, and he received him, and he touched him, and he healed him. No matter if you're poor, no matter if you're helpless this morning, Jesus will in no wise cast you out. All right, you might say this morning, Brother Danny, now I, I ain't going to ask you to raise your hands on these lights because I wouldn't want to embarrass nobody, but there may be somebody here this morning to say, Brother Danny, I know it's one thing to lie. I know it's one thing to, to steal. But Brother Danny, I've stooped to the lowest ebb that a human can take. Brother Danny, I've took another human being's life. I've killed somebody. I've had people tell me that maybe in a war, or maybe in a fight, or maybe in a brawl, that maybe they, they took another person's life. And all these years since that happened, they've been thinking the Lord will never forgive you because you took a person's life. There may be somebody in this church this morning that sometime or another in your life, you took the life of another human being. And the devil has never let you get over that thing since. Now, I want to talk real serious to you this morning. This may help somebody for the rest of their life. I have no idea whatsoever. But I feel like the Lord wanted me to say this this morning. I was talking to a man one day and we was witnessing to him. And we said, sir, wouldn't you like to be saved? Wouldn't you like to turn your life over to Jesus this morning and come to him? He'll forgive you. That man looked back at us and he said, Not now. And we looked back at him and he had tears starting to come out of his eyes. And we said, Sir, wouldn't you like to get saved today? Wouldn't you like to know Jesus today? And he said, I tell you, I was in the war. He told us what war he was in. He said one time we was out on the field and we was a fighting. And it might have been World War II or something. I don't know, but been several years ago and he told me this and he said we was out yonder and he said a man come up to me and we was a fighting and all we could do is kill or be killed. He said I was got in a fight with this guy and he said I had a, all I had was a bayonet. And he said I took that bayonet and I rammed it down that man's throat. And he said I can still feel how that feels that bayonet went down that man's throat. You can hear that man screaming a lot of nights when I lay down, when I lay down and put my head on my pillar, I can hear that man screaming Then when I rammed that bayonet down his throat. He, and he started crying. Tears started coming down his face. And he said, Ever since then, I just felt like God wouldn't forgive me. Well, what a terrible sin I've committed. I told him, I said, Let me tell you something, sir. I read in the Bible about a man by the name of Saul of Tarsus. Brother, this man was an evil man. I tell you, when the first man was stoned, the first Christian was stoned. The Bible says, when Stephen was stoned in the book of Acts, that they took his clothes and laid them at the feet of a young man whose name was Saul. And they tell us that it was a custom in those days when a man was stoned that you were to take the feet of the man that was stoned, of the, the clothes, and lay them at the feet of the one who was responsible for his death. And I want to say this morning, brother, old Saul of Tarsus was responsible for the death of many Christians. That made him a murderer in the sight of God. Brother, this man was evil, and he hated Christians, and he was out to get them. 
and every Christian he could get a hold of, he'd have them put in prison and have them persecuted. And he said after he got saved, he said, I persecuted the church of God and wasted it. I want to say thank God one day he is on the road to Damascus. This old man had murder in his heart. He was going to kill another man. He had it in his heart to do away with all Christians. He said amen to the death of Jesus Christ. Brother, he was a murderer. He is on his road to Damascus one day, and the Bible said a light from heaven struck him down. And brother, he's, he got up and he couldn't see well, they said, these old modern theologians said, well, it was just hot that day, and he had a sunstroke. Brother, he had a sunstroke, all right. The Son of God struck him down. And he said, Who art thou, Lord? And he said, I'm Jesus, whom thou persecutest. And Brother old Paul, boy, that makes me feel good, don't it, you? The Lord, forgive him. I know he's bound to forgive me. I tell you what your problem is, it's hard for you to forgive yourself. It's not near as hard for God to forgive you. You know what people's problem is? You just can't get over it yourself. You just can't forgive yourself. God can forgive you this morning. And old Saul jumped up there and he said, Lord, what will I have to do? And he said, turn around, boy. Go back the other direction. Go preach. And he went back and he preached the faith which he had once destroyed. And they couldn't believe it. The people couldn't believe it. He said, I was injured and I was a blasphemer because I'd done it ignorantly and unbelief. But he said, but I obtained mercy from the Lord. And brother, he did. Brother Jesus, he came to Jesus and Jesus said, Paul, I in no wise cast you out. Now if Jesus wanted to, that would have been a good case where he could cast somebody out. He could have said, you've been down there killing my people. You've been down there murdering Christians. I'll not receive you. I'll never forgive you for that. But the Lord was reminded of what he said in this scripture I read you this morning. Him that cometh to me, I'll in no wise cast out. Let me say this morning, there may be somebody here that you're guilty of sins of the flesh. There may be somebody here this morning that's guilty of the sin of of adultery. And I can't tell you, and I want you to listen real close now, I cannot tell you how, how many people this morning that we just went up and knocked on their door and went in and maybe started talking to them and they wasn't saved and they didn't live for the Lord and when we got to the root of their problem, that was it. They finally would open up and they'd tell you. They'd say, well, Brother Danny, I left my wife. God, I know God won't forgive me. I've had, I've had ladies and, and young ladies tell me that since they've been married twice or since this had happened or that had happened, that God would never forgive them for it. But brother, I want to turn you back to the Word of God and see what God said about it. There was a woman in John chapter 4 that Jesus came upon one day and he met her and she was called the woman at the well. And she was out there drawing water. And Jesus sat down one day and he said, give me the drink. And she gave him the drink. You know, she couldn't believe that he would talk to her because she was a Samaritan woman. And the Lord began to talk to this woman and the Lord began to look at her problem and the Lord seen what she had done and he saw you a sin. And you know what? He read that woman's life off to her. He said, your problem, ma'am, is this. You have had five husbands. There ain't none of them old Hollywood husbands had nothing on her, boy. Back in them days. He said, you have had five husbands. And the one you've got now is not your husband. He said, you've been married five times, and the man you're living with you ain't married to. Now... I don't reckon there's anybody in here that's beat that. Hope not anyway, because you never know these days. Here's a woman that had been married five times. Not living with a man she wasn't married to. Let me say, first of all, this morning, it is a sin to shack up. I mean, it's wicked and it's a devil to shack up without this common law junk. No such thing. God said, 
you know, obey the powers that be, obey the laws of the land. The Lord says, get a marriage license and do it legal. And that's the only way God will honor it and bless it. But I also want to say this morning, if you have sinned and broke God's law, God will forgive you. No doubt! There may be somebody here in this church this morning. You cheated on your husband. You ran around on your husband. And you done him so dirty that you feel terrible inside. And you feel wicked inside. You may run around on your wife. And you can't get over it. You can't get over it. You can't get over it. I want you to read what Jesus said to this woman. He said, ma'am, I'll help you. I'll bless you. He became her Savior that day. He saved her that day. She got clean that day. And he told her to go and tell the other people and she did and I want to say to you this morning he said I will in no wise cast out have you been unfaithful to your husband or your wife the Lord will forgive you this morning the devil will not let you forget it sometimes God will forgive you and I want to say also this morning sin of religion. There's a lot of people that are just so religious and so so pious and so good that it seems hard for them to ever get saved. There's a lot of people in McDowell County that they don't drink, they don't smoke, they don't cuss, they don't chew, they don't steal, they don't run around, they don't do anything that anybody would consider wrong. And yet they still never come to Jesus. Now they're going to the same hell that, that all the other drunks and prostitutes and whoremongers are going to. They're going to all wind up in the same place. And I read about a man like this in the book of John chapter 3 by the name of Nicodemus. A good man! A man that says, I've never killed anybody. A man that can say, I don't lie. A man that can say, I, I ain't stole anything. A man that could say, I keep all of the Ten Commandments. Best I can. But he still had to come to Jesus. You may be here this morning, you'd be sitting there thinking, Boy, I ain't never committed adultery. Boy, I ain't never robbed a bank. Boy, I ain't never took a gun and shot nobody. But you still got to come to Jesus the same way anybody else does. Brother, this man came to Jesus, and Jesus didn't say, Oh, go on out of here, you religious thing. You're good enough. You, I don't need you. You don't need me. The Lord told him. He took time and preached him a sermon. And he said, You must be born again. And Nicodemus heard him gladly. And the Lord received Nicodemus when he came to talk to him that night. Let me say to you this morning, in closing, that the Lord promises you three things. If you will come to Jesus Christ this morning, not come to me, not come to join this church, not come say, I won't be a Baptist. If you will present yourself to Jesus Christ this morning, sincerely, from the bottom of your heart, He promises you three things. Number one, He promises that He will receive you. He said, Him that cometh to me, I will in no wise, under no circumstances, under any circumstances, will I turn him away. He will receive you. Isaiah, to, or Psalm rather, 51 and verse 17. The Bible said, A broken and a contrite heart, O God, thou wilt not despise. You know, a lot of times we just have a broken heart over our sins. We just cry and we say, Oh God, I'm sorry. Oh God, I didn't, I'm sorry. I want to live for you. And the devil says, God ain't going to listen to you. He ain't going to hear that. You know what the Bible says? God will not despise a broken heart. I mean, if you're serious, listen to what I'm saying, folks. This is the best news you've heard all week long. I tell you, you turn on the TV, all you hear is bad news, bad news. Inflation's up, gas is up, milk's up, uh, and, and peace is down, and everything else is going wrong. But I want you to know this morning, this is the good news. I'm giving you the good news. If you'll have a broken heart of your sin and really be sorry for you, God will not turn you away this morning. He will receive you. And then also, second this morning, the second thing I promise you that Jesus will do on the authority of His Word, I promise you Jesus will do this for you. 
He will forgive you. He will forgive you. Bible said in 1 John 1, 9, If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive our sins. Don't you let the devil tell you you've gone too far. Don't you let the devil tell you God don't want to hear you. He promises you He will forgive you this morning. And then the third thing this morning, I promise you on the authority of God's Word that He'll receive you. He'll forgive you. And third, He'll never mention your sin again. Jesus will never bring that thing up to you. Uh, nowhere, never in life. I mean, the Lord, He's not, he's not so dirty that he'd, he'd, he'd say, I'm going to forgive you now. And then six months from now, the first time you do something He don't like, say, wait a minute, boy, what about that sin you committed back up? The Lord don't do that. You know what the Bible says about our sins? Jeremiah 31, verse 34, He said, I will remember their sin no more. Well, that makes me want to say hallelujah to the Lord this morning. Because you know what? All them sins that I've committed, everything wrong that I've ever done, the Lord's forgot about it. He's put it behind Him. And the Bible said He put it as far as the east is from the west. That's a long way, you know it? You have to go a long ways east before you ever get west. You, you keep going east from now on, you'll never get west. That's how far our sins are away from here. As one old preacher said, the Lord put our sins in the sea of forgetfulness and put up a no fishing sign so the devil can't hatch them back up and bring them up against us again. I want to say to you this morning, He will never, 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 never mention your sin anymore. If you're here this morning and you're carrying a guilty, heavy load, and maybe you started going out smoking pot, and maybe you started up drunk a few times, and you feel bad about it, you feel guilty about it, I want to say to you this morning, the Lord will forgive you, He'll forget it, He'll never, never, never mention it to you again. You'll confess it. You may be here and you've been a murderer. You may be here and you committed adultery. You may be here and you've lied or you've stole or you've cheated. Jesus said, Him that cometh to me, I'll in no wise cast out. If you'll come to Him, I guarantee you, I promise you, He'll take you in. He'll never mention it to you again. Thank God this morning there's probably somebody in here today. As I told you before, I had something else that I wanted to preach to you on this morning. The Lord kept going bring me back to this Scripture. Somebody in this church this morning needs the Lord. You need Him bad. You need Him more than you need a million dollars. You need the Lord more this morning, and you need all your bills paid off. You need God. Brother, I want to say to you this morning, I promise you on authority His Word, if you'll come to Him, and you'll say, Dear Lord, I've sinned, and you'll mean it from your heart, He will not turn you down. He'll receive you. Let's stand together with our heads bowed and eyes closed. While our heads are bowed and eyes are closed this morning, in just a minute we're going to sing a verse of some invitational hymn. We're going to pray first. I want to ask you to search your heart today. While the pianist begins to play softly this morning, I want to ask you this question. Is there somebody in this church that say, Brother Danny, I've, I ain't killed nobody, and I ain't, I ain't murdered anybody, or I've not committed adultery, or I've not done a lot of these things you were talking about this morning but still I need God I need the Lord somehow or another the devil's been trying to tell me brother Danny that that I'm just so sinful that the Lord don't want to have nothing to do with me no more and this morning I need the church to pray for me I need help I wonder if you just signify that this morning by raising your hand and taking it right back down God bless you. God bless you. God bless you, sir. Someone else. Bless you, ma'am. 
just raise your hand, take it right back down. We're not going to come to you. We're not going to embarrass you. We're not going to call anybody's name. We're not going to come back and try to drag you to the altar. We just want to know how to pray for you this morning. You want to slip up your hand. Say, Preacher, remember me in this prayer. I need your prayers. Thank you. Somebody else. God bless you. God bless you, ma'am. God bless you, sir. Somebody else. Right quick. Right quick, slip it up and say, Preacher, I need you to pray for me this morning. Slip up that hand, take it right back down. Christians, you pray. God bless you, ma'am. Someone else. Someone else, anywhere. God bless you. God bless you. Somebody else, right quick, before we pray. Preacher, I need your prayers this morning. Slip up your hand. God bless you, sir. God bless you, sir. Amen. Thank God. Thank God. Christians pray. God wants to do something in somebody's life this morning. Now listen, friend. I can guarantee you, no matter what your sin is, no matter what your problem is, if you will come to Jesus and confess to Him and mean it, the Lord will forgive you. I guarantee you, I promise you on the authority of God's Word, God will help you this morning. There's no use waiting till tonight. There's no use waiting till next Sunday. You need to get this thing settled this morning. Get it over with. Get it fixed up today before you walk out those doors. It'll never be any easier. We're going to pray and we're going to give an invitation. If God's speaking to your heart today, I want you to just slip out of your seat in just a moment. We begin to sing. Make your way down here to this altar. There'll be somebody to pray with you. And whatever that sin, there may be somebody here that you've been going to bed for 20 years. And that same sin's been coming up bothering you that you've done a long time ago. Get rid of that thing this morning. Let God put that thing behind you once and for all today. Let God forgive you and then you forget it and get up and go on. He won't turn you away. He won't say, no, I forgive everything but this or but that. He said, I in no wise cast out. Not under any circumstances will He turn you down. Our Father, we pray in Jesus' name, Lord, that You'd help someone to see this eternal truth today. And I pray a special prayer for they, these that have raised their hands that this will be the day, this will be the moment, Lord, that they'll say, all right, Jesus, I'm coming to you and mean it. Oh, God, do it, I pray in Jesus' name. And Lord, maybe for those that didn't raise their hand that needed to come, I pray a convicting power will move upon them right now in this invitation. Help them get this thing settled. In Jesus' name we pray.